let's have a little bit of a review of what a function is before we talk about what it means that, what, what the domain of a function means. So a function we can view as something, so I'll put a function in this box here, and it takes inputs, and for a given input, it's going to produce an output, which we call f of x. So for example, let's say that we have the function, let's say we have the function f of x is equal to two over x. So in this case, if, so let me see, so if that's my function f, if I were to input the number three, well, f of three that we're going to output, we, have, we know how to figure that out. We've defined it right over here. It's going to be equal to two over three. It's going to be equal to two over three. So we were able, to, for that input, we were able to find an output. If our input was pi, then we input into our function, and then f of pi, when, when x is pi, we're going to output f of pi, which is equal to two over pi. So we could write this as two over pi. So we were able to find the output pretty easily. But now let's do something interesting. Let's attempt to input zero into the function. If we input zero, does the function tell us what we need to output? Does this definition tell us what we need to output? So if I attempt to put x equals zero, then this definition would say f of zero would be two over zero. But two over zero is undefined. Let me write this, two over zero. This is undefined. This function definition does not tell us what to actually do with zero. It gives us an undefined answer. So this function is not defined here. It gives a question mark. So this gets to the essence of what domain is. Domain is the set of all inputs over which the function is defined. So the domain of this function f would be all real numbers except for x equals zero. So let me write down these, these big ideas. This is so domain, a domain of a function. Actually, let me write that down. Domain of a function. A domain of a function is the set of all inputs, inputs over which the function is defined. Over which the function is defined, or the function has defined outputs, over which the function has defined outputs. So the domain for this f in particular, so the domain for this one, if I wanted to say it's domain, I could say, look, it's going to be the set, and this curly brackets, these are kind of typical mathy set notation. I could say, okay, it's going to be the set of, and I'm going to put curly brackets like that, well, x can be a member, this, this, little, this little symbol means a member of the real numbers, but it can't just be any real number. It can be most of the real numbers, except it cannot be zero, because we don't know this definition. It, it's undefined when you put an input a zero. So x is a member of the real numbers, and when we write real numbers, we write it with this kind of double stroke right over here. That's the set of all real numbers such that, but we have to, we have to put, out, put the exception, zero is not a, x equals zero is not a member of that domain such that x does not does not equal 0 now let's let's make this a little bit more concrete by doing some more examples some more examples we do hopefully the the clearer this will become so let's say we have another function and just to be clear we're not all we don't always have to use f, f's and x's we could say let's say we have g of y is equal to the square root of y minus 6 so what's the domain here? What is the set of all inputs over which this function g is defined? So here we are inputting a y into function g, and we're going to output g of y. Well, it's going to be defined as long as whatever we have under the radical right over here is non-negative. If this becomes negative, our, our traditional principal root operator here is not defined. We need something that, if, we, if this ended up being a negative number, hey, well, how do you take the principal root of a negative number? And we're just saying this is kind of the, the traditional principal root operator. So y minus six, y minus six needs to be greater than or equal to zero in order for in order for g to be defined for that input y. Or you could say, add six to both sides, y needs to be greater than or equal to six. Or you could say g is defined for any inputs y that are greater than or equal to six. So we could say the domain here, we could say that the domain here is the set of all y's that are a member of the real numbers such that y such that they're also greater than or equal 
such that they're also greater than or equal to six. So hopefully this is starting to make some sense. And you know, we're also always used to functions defined this way, but you could even see functions that are defined in fairly exotic ways. You could see a function, let me say, h of x. h of x could be defined as, it literally could be defined as, well, h of x is going to be one if x is equal to pi and it's equal to zero if if x is equal to three. Now what's the domain here? And I encourage you to pause the video and think about it. Well, this function is actually only defined for two inputs. If you, we know h of, we know h of pi, if you input pi into it, we know you're going to output one. And we know that if you input three into it, h of three, when x equals three, you're going to, you're going to, let me put some commas here, you're going to get a zero. But if you input anything else, what, what's h of four going to be? Well, it hasn't defined it. It's undefined. What's h of negative one going to be? It hasn't defined it. So the domain, the domain here, the domain of h is literally, it's, it's just literally going to be the, the two valid inputs that x can be are three and pi. Three and pi. These are the only valid inputs. These are the only two numbers over which this function is actually defined. So this hopefully starts to give you a flavor of, of why we care about domains. Not all functions are defined over all real numbers. Some are defined for only a, a small subset of real numbers or for some other thing or only whole numbers or natural numbers or positive numbers or negative numbers or they have exceptions. So we'll see that as we do more and more examples.